1989 and the day he died it was a birthday good afternoon everybody welcome back to the atheist experience i'm your host ashley perrion and my co-host this week jeff d thank Hi. you very much for joining us thanks ashley hi folks uh, we are live June 13th, and we are being sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday at Crescent City Beignets on 6th Street, a couple blocks west of Lamar. Uh, that is every Sunday, starting at around 11.30 and going on till around about 1.30 or thereabouts. Um, that is every Sunday, except for the third Sunday of every month, when we have our lecture series at, uh, wow, um, the Austin History Center on 9th and Guadalupe. Uh, that starts at 12.30. The next one's going to be this upcoming Sunday, which is uh, June 20th. Uh, we don't have a lecture lined up for this week, but we are having a discussion on um, the Center for Inquiry, CFI, is considering opening up, opening up a center in Texas, and one of their spots is potentially Austin. Um, if that happens, we will actually be uh, possibly joining with them in some way, and that's what we're going to have a meeting on, is to try and discuss that, see what we want to do, what we don't want to do. So if you are a member of the atheist community of Austin or have interest in the Center for Inquiry possibly opening up an office down here, uh, you're encouraged to come down to that meeting and voice your opinions. Uh, we'd love to have a lot of people there to really hash this out and see what's going on. Uh, again, that is this upcoming Sunday, the 20th, at the Austin History Center, 9th and Guadalupe, at 12.15, 12.30, we're going to be starting. Um, regular things that we do, uh, again, the Sunday meetings. Uh, also, every Monday night, we have Godless Gamers at the House of Russell Glasser. If you go to our website, atheist-community.org, and write to the webmaster, uh, he can give you directions and details on that. That's every Monday night at 7 o'clock. We sit around, play board games, card games, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, every Thursday, we have Atheist Happy Hour at Antonio's Tex-Mex on the southbound feeder of I-35, just south of 183. That starts at 7.30 and goes until we decide to leave the place. Uh, it's usually a good time, just general discussion, uh, sitting around the table eating tacos. Um, also, every other Saturday, we have the Internet Audio Show, The Nonprofits, hosted by our own Jeff D. and co-hosted by Russell Glass, or uh, produced by Russell Glasser, co-hosted by Dennis Lou Bay. Uh, that's every other Saturday, and the next upcoming one, upcoming one is this Saturday, the 19th. That's correct. Um, and uh, that is a streaming uh, MP3. It's, all, it's hosted at atheistnetwork.com. If you actually go to our website, atheist-community.org, and click on the Nonprofits Radio link, you can download about the last half do dozen or so episodes from there. Um, so that, I believe, is it. Um, so uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. Again, we are live June 13th. We're going to be getting onto calls in a little while. Um, we're going to go ahead and get over to Jeff for a couple minutes for a couple news stories. But uh, we can go ahead and put the phone number up and uh, let some calls start racking up. So, um, again, we're, we are a live call-in show. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that for us, please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. So, uh, what kind of news stories do we have for this week? Well, uh, I got a couple of stories. Maybe we should start with these. Got a couple of stories on um, fraud in religion. Okay. Uh, you know, it's one thing for people with beliefs to have the freedom to hold their beliefs. It's quite another thing for them to uh, make to claim that they're uh, make make claims of fact and collect money on the basis of those claims. Yes. When in fact, it's not a fact. Uh, so believe what you want, but if you're going to claim something, uh, be able to show that it's true. For example. Author of study on pregnancy and prayer pleads guilty to fraud charges. This is from uh, June 8. Wow. Doctors were shocked in 2001 to read a study from Columbia University that found that praying for women seeking to become pregnant could double their chances of success using in vitro fertilization. Some doctors were even more shocked that the study, which they considered highly flawed, had been published in a peer-reviewed journal. Now comes the final surprise. One of the paper's three authors, authors pleaded guilty last month to two federal charges of fraud. 
Daniel P. Worth, a lawyer and researcher into the supernatural, was accused of conspiring with another man to defraud several banks, the Pew Charitable Trusts, and Adelphia Communications, a cable television company. According to the charges, the two men bilked Adelphia of $2.1 million. They pled guilty to conspiring to commit mail fraud and bank fraud. Both men will face as much as five years in federal prison and $250,000 in fines when they are sentenced in September. They have agreed to forfeit more than $1 million seized during an investigation of the case. Mr. Worth was one of three authors of a September 2001 paper in the Journal of Reproductive Medicine. The other two were Quang Y. Cha, who is now scientific director of a fertility clinic in Los Angeles, and Rogerio A. Lobo, chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Columbia's College of Physicians and Surgeons, and a member of the editorial board of the Reproductive Medicine Journal. Neither Dr. Cha nor Dr. Lobo responded for requests for comments by the folks that put together this um, this so, uh, article. So given that they built this company out of, what, two million dollars well it, uh, it raises like it raises f reasonable questions about exactly. how trustworthy these guys are in the first place exactly um that also raises questions about the fact that this guy is a lawyer and researcher into the supernatural not a physician not even a scientist really so um, he doesn't have any kind so of medical degree so what was he doing on this three person study in the first place so there's no medical degree or anything there. right Okay. Um, and uh, and he's got, and it's more than just this. I, I've read other articles on this case. The guy okay. has a history of extremely questionable uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean... Uh, yeah, why, well, how could he possibly have gotten on this, this medical study in the first place that proved that, or proved that praying for someone who's trying to get in vitro fertilization will increase their chances. Well, clearly, the, you know, it, it's the case in, uh, in research into the effects of prayer that the people who are most interested in funding those studies are apparently the same people who want to get positive results from those studies. Of course. They want to prove that prayer actually does something. And so there are a lot of these studies getting money. Yes. So then the question is, well, what's a good way to make a bunch of money? Put together a study and tell your religious believers that are funding it that it's going to prove the things that they want to prove. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's, just a, it's, just, it's just you know, a way of um, defrauding people on the basis of their beliefs, you know, t t taking advantage of people on the basis of their beliefs. Instead of simply sticking to the evidence, you know, well, does the study show anything? I, the, this article goes on. Um, uh, you know, they talk about these other two doctors. One of them has already written it off and said, well, I just, I'm just on the editorial staff. All I did was give it a, a cursory glance and say, yeah, okay, we can publish this, and I had nothing to do with the rest of it. Um, the, uh, the <laughs> for example... There were other problems with the paper, said Bruce Flam, a clinical professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the University of California at Irvine. The study bore bewildering methodological flaws, he said on, mo on Monday. So this is, in addition to the fact of, you know, I mean, merely being caught uh, engaging in fraud, yeah. and, you know, swindling people, doesn't prove that your science was bad. Of course. This is what proves that the science was bad. Bewildering methodological flaws. Instead of merely having a group of people pray for the women attempting to get pregnant, the study had one group doing that, a second group praying to help the first group, and a third group <sighs> play, praying that, quote, God's will or desire be fulfilled for the prayer participants. Wow. Redundancy among in prayers. the first two groups. So I mean, it's like that. It, it does make sense in science to have a control group, right? Of course. But the control group would be the women getting fertility treatments who were not being prayed for. Exactly. That's the control group. There's no need to have multiple groups of prayers praying for different things, particularly when there's no way of discovering, you know, what effect, if any, they're having. Yeah. I mean. I, is there a second group that is also praying for the women but not being prayed for by the third yeah. group? I mean... Yeah. <laughs> How far back does the redundancy have to go? Yeah. So if this, if this actually did prove anything, would we then have to have someone praying for you, 
someone praying for them who's praying for you. Yeah. And then somebody else asking God to make sure yeah, that the first two people's prayers were actually answered. And then looking at the results from all those groups, yeah. right, with their different, you know, they're doing different things, and, <laughs> and comparing the results to find out, well, which one did what. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually difficult work doing science. That's why do, not everybody does it. <laughs> and uh, it takes more than just a desire to swindle Christians out of their money to fund your study. Yeah. So Now, the other big question is why Columbia University um, sponsored this, published it, and then has, has, since this came out, at least according to the art, two articles I've read, okay. neither of them have, or, or, um, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, university has not come out to say, we're sorry, this is bogus, or we apologize and we're looking into it, nothing. The, um, I think uh, in one, the other article that I read, Columbia had taken the specific um, study off of their website, and that was it. Okay. But it sounds like other doctors and other, study, other scientists have actually kind of shredded this thing anyway. Yes. Yes, but they're all wondering, you know, how could this have happened? Why did they ignore... Get out there the why did they place. not look into the backgrounds of these people? You know, how could they have let this... this thing get so far as to actually be studied in their peer-reviewed journal before yeah. uh, the, it all comes out that it's bogus. Yeah, of the three doctors, one of which is later accused of stealing money from other companies. And who isn't a doctor. And fraud, and isn't a doctor. No. Another one who is in the study says that he was in the editorial, I glanced at it, but didn't really yeah. read anything about it. And the third so. guy's not talking. Yeah. So... <laughs> There's clearly a lot of embarrassment going around there, which can also explain the silence. But um, yeah, yeah. the whole point of this is, uh, this is what happens when, um, this is what happens when science is done with a pre-existing bias. Now, in this case, it, I don't know about the motivations of the other two people that signed off on this paper, but but yeah. this one guy who's got a history of. Um, of fraud and has been convicted of it again, you know, there's, a, there's good reason to think that his motivation was purely lining his pockets with yeah. money coming from believers. Yeah. And, I, and I don't know how the believers' money works into it, right? Could yeah. be that the believers are the people at Columbia University that let him do the study and published yeah. it, right? But research, research funds come from somewhere. Uh, unfortunately, the the article is not more detailed than that. Or it could just be not even necessarily purely financial gain, but just he is now a major part of this study, which is going to be touted out amongst all religious churches. Oh, sure. It could be for future and gains, so right? Um, his name if, will be plastered if on If he that. wasn't in prison, so. he might have a lucrative you know, speaking career <laughs> exactly. going around exactly. talking to Christians about how he proved their, their beloved belief in the power of prayer true. Exactly. And how the evil establishment is now just trying to destroy him. Yeah, yeah. Now, the way to do science is not have a pre-existing bias. The way to do science is, look, here's something that really is worth studying. And a question like, does prayer work, is worth studying. Of course. A few times until it's established <laughs> that it has no effect or yeah. until it's established that it does. Yeah. The problem is that all these studies that are coming out are being done by people who, for financial reasons or for personal reasons, want the result to come out a certain way. Yeah. So um, here's a related story from Nigeria. Ah, if yes. you're interested. Um, uh, Nigeria remains deeply divided over a ban imposed last month on television station, stations showing so-called miracle shows. The NBC, that's the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, not the American television network, the body which regulates broadcasting says some of the miracles shown on television are false, and stations can broadcast miracles only when they are verifiable. So basically the law is, and again, this is another thing I've read a few versions of the, of the, uh, of the news about it. Okay. Basically the deal is, they said, you can go right on having your miracle programs, but you know, if you're going to tell your viewers that something happened that is miraculous, we're going to require evidence, clear, unambiguous evidence, that the thing you're calling a miracle is in fact a miracle, a violation of natural law, right? Yeah. And not just, well, you know, a unusual coincidence, but within the bounds of natural law, yeah. and certainly not outright fraud. Avid viewer Ang B. Olusola 
said television stations were less interesting as a result of the ban. <laughs> but some Nigerians, like Ayodele Ojo, say they're glad that television viewers are no longer inundated with church services showing miracles. Quote, it got to a point that when you turned on your television set, virtually all the stations were showing the same program. Hmm. The television stations have now replaced the money-making pro uh, uh, religious programs with non-commercial music shows and documentaries. Now, wait a minute. The law doesn't say they have to do that. No. The law does not say religious programming is illegal. The law says... If you're going to claim on your religious program that something's a miracle, you've got to prove it. Yeah. Right? Which they so, should have no problems doing. Which they should have no problems doing if it is, in fact, actually a miracle, yeah. right? It seems perfectly reasonable. So rather than providing the proof, ra and rather than continuing the religious programming but not making miracle claims that they can't prove, yeah. they've stopped doing the shows altogether. Uh, Livinus Okpala of the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation says the commission is fully resolved to enforcing the ban. But Tematope Joshua, a prophet notable for performing miracle, many miracles on television, says no one can stop the work of God. But wait a minute. You guys are not showing your <laughs> religious programs anymore. You know, the, the law is not a law that says you can't do the work of God on television. Hmm. It's a law that says if you're going to claim that a thing happened in your show that's a miracle, you've got to prove that it's a miracle. Yeah, they can still perform miracles. So either there were miracles going on, real miracles going on, but you can't prove it, which seems bizarre, because, you know, the definition of a miracle is something miraculous. You'd think it would be unusual <laughs> enough and different enough from the normal course of natural events that it would be easy to prove, yeah, right? I mean, walking on water? Easy to prove that's miraculous. Um, so if, if there really were miracles going on, then I'm sorry, I'm afraid the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, excuse me, Nigerian, Nigerian Broadcasting Commission has stopped the work of God. <laughs> I mean, that may be not what they were after, but if, the, if simply asking for proof makes miracles not happen, then you're wrong. Anybody can stop that. Mm. Either that or it wasn't the work of God. And you guys are just a bunch of frauds. <laughs> uh, Mr. And Ojo, that's the, uh, that is the guy talking about what television is like in Nigeria okay. now, says churches advertise miracles as a commercial gimmick to attract more members. Quote, these people are not preaching the gospel. They are advertising miracles. It is a marketing strategy to woo more people to their churches, knowing that the more people they have, the more money they get. Of course. F to him, church members are like customers from whom those who run the churches make their money. Perhaps it is for this region reason that some Nigerians see churches in the country as business ventures. This has led some to call for churches to start paying taxes. Mm. Now, I've got news for Mr. Ojo. It's like that in the United States, too. <laughs> so. All right. There you go. Okay. A little bit of, a little bit of background on um, how far religious organizations and religious believers are willing to go in order to... Um, Make money from their yeah. claims. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, looks like we might have one other news story from one of our callers, and so we will get to him now. Russell, how are you doing? Hi, guys. Hey, what's up? Hi, Russell. I was wondering if you heard the extremely excellent news about Michael Newdow. I did hear extreme. Well, I heard news about Michael Newdow. Yeah. Um, it says that uh, Newdow wins million dollar libel judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Can we read where it says the, the minister who slandered yeah. him doesn't have a million dollars? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it does mention that he doesn't expect to collect on it. But, yeah. exactly. you know, I hope he uh, soaks him for all that he's worth, if possible. Yeah. Um, uh, when, when are religious people going to learn that they can't just, you know, spew claims without being able to prove them and get away with it? Uh, I've got news for you. They can. <laughs> That's nope. the problem. Um, that? Most of the time they do get away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but where we're talking in, sure, a lot of times they do. But when they get caught, then this happens, right? Then, yeah. their, then their stupid religious program in Nigeria has to go off the air, or they have to cough up a million dollars to Michael Newdow. 
to an atheist. Right. Well, I mean, you know, this, this is standard practice for them, which is when something happens that they don't like, they tell lies about the person. In this case, yeah. basically lying about Nudo's testimony, uh, about his testimony, he said... Uh, they claimed that he said that his daughter had been caused emotional damage by being made to recite the pledge, and the daughter said, in fact, she didn't. Uh, uh, but, in but, fact, uh, Mike Ludow never said that in the first place, and that had right. nothing to do with his case. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, well, they're going to try and do what they can to try and discredit him in any way, shape, or form possible. And Of course uh, they are, but I hope that every time they try, he gets some money from them. <laughs> so what do you think about this law uh, requiring broadcasters in Nigeria to prove that a miracle occurred if they claim that a miracle occurred? What do you think about that law? You mean, do, like, do I think it would be a good idea to have it over here? For example, yeah. Um, sure, but it would never fly with, with the uh, religious right. You people are so negative. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, know, we, we could always have a, a mutual meet-in-the-middle type thing and say, if you want to have these miraculous claims, that's fine. You don't have to prove it. As long as at the beginning of the show there is at least a 10-second uh, plaque that says, entertainment purposes only. There is no basis on fact here. We're not trying to prove anything. That would be You're fair. required sure. by the I'd NCC to say that this is all completely made up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're completely right. pulling it out of our asses, but... <laughs> Entertainment purposes only. Exactly. Not to exactly. show any, anything actually supernatural happening. Exactly. Right. So. Well, anyway, have a good rest of the show, guys. Thanks, okay, Rosa. thanks for calling. See ya. Is I just I just don't agree with that I, I that that pessimism that there's no way we can have laws like that here I mean we have yeah. we have ha um, France right France yes. has its great law that says yeah. if you if you take advantage of somebody's situation like illness mm. poverty youth um, youth so yeah take take advantage of their vulnerability in order to induct them into your organization be it religious or otherwise. Yeah. But that's a crime. That's yeah. a crime, and you can go to jail for that in yeah. France. Which is a good thing. It's, it's not... If you're under some kind of duress, be it medical problems or you're not young enough to really think these things through, mm -hmm. and they try and convince you of something, they have an easy job doing that. That's right. That's right. And that's one those thing. are not the times to make decisions right. that alter your life right. and where you can sign off all your belongings to this religious group to try and heal your problems. Right, I and mean, it's one thing to 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 agree, as atheists generally do, all the ones I've talked to, that people should have the right to believe what they want. Of course, and that and further that people should have the right to make a case to others to yeah. try to convince others to believe as they do. Those are all perfectly fine. As soon as you cross the line into taking advantage of people, it's wrong. Even if you think what you're trying to convince that person of is the truth you shouldn't be taking advantage of the other person's poverty or, you know, a death in their family or their own illness or any of the numerous other things that religions in general and Christianity in particular take advantage of all the time in our country to get people to agree to the religion. Now, how would you position this, I guess? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of something like insurance. Yeah. If you go to someone who's in the hospital yeah. and doesn't have a will set up, doesn't have anything like that set up, and a lawyer goes to them and says, look, you're in a bad position right now, uh -huh. we've got to get a will ready, for instance. Uh -huh. That's something that we know is true. They should probably be doing something like that. Yeah, now, but the if thing a religious person comes to them, they're under the impression that what they're saying is true. They really should convert to Christianity. Yeah, I don't think that's the problem. I think that, that you know, if... if as I understand it, under this law in France, if you did what you just described, okay. you went directly to the ill person okay. and said, "You here, pay me money, to set up and I will set up the insurance program. I'll pay my insurance company yeah. money from which I'll get a commission or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And they go straight to the person who's in that predicament okay. that to would take really advantage of their, that person's illness to get them to sign papers. That is the violation of the law. Okay. Right? Now, if you brought in relatives and said, look... Yeah. You know, your your, uh, yeah, your grandfather or father is... Right, yeah. somebody not ill, somebody with a little more perspective on yeah. what's going on, okay. who's not hasn't got this, you know, threat hanging over their heads that they themselves are, uh, you know, going to die if they don't do something. That's different, right? Then you're, okay. uh, then you're not taking advantage. All right, okay. As I understand it. Okay. 
Um, anyway, we can go on to other callers. Uh, well, we'll get to news stories if we have time later on. Uh, anyway, right now we got Mike. How you doing? Hi, guys. Hi. Hi this Mike. is sort of a news, uh, news related, and it also sort of refers to, uh, I usually get calls from people saying, what's the purpose of the show? I mean, why don't you guys just stay in the closet and leave us, you know, this year alone? <laughs> uh, on June, I think it's the, uh, let's see, June 3rd edition of Hannity and Combs, they had uh, Tony Blankley on. He's the uh, editorial page editor for the Washington Times. And they were talking about uh, George Soros, who donates a lot of money to Democratic uh, uh, concerns. Uh, he's given, I think, $2.6 million to uh, move on, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And they're basically knocking George Soros. And one of the main reasons is here's a quote from Blankley. He supported abortion in Eastern Europe, a country that's losing population. He's a self-admitted atheist. I think he's a very bad influence in the world. He's entitled to spend his money, and the public is entitled to know what kind of man he is. So basically, you have on national TV this Washington Post editor saying that he's a self-admitted atheist, using that as an excuse to basically knock down this person. Um, Washington Times, you say? Uh, Washington, yeah, Washington Times. Isn't the Washington Times the newspaper owned by the Reverend Sun Young Moon? I believe so. I correct. think so, too. This guy's a reporter from there? He's the uh, editorial page editor. Editorial page editor. Yes. From s- the Reverend Sun Young Moon's yes. newspaper. Yes. And isn't it true that the Reverend Sun Young Moon recently had himself crowned the second coming of Christ in a ceremony <laughs> yes. attended by several members of Congress? I'm not sure if it's recent. I know he's, he's done that it. That is, in fact, I, well, I can tell you, that in fact, that's true. In fact, there's photos of the ceremony posted on the Internet right. where you can see the congressman Republicans right. and Democrats, I should add, uh, one of which is carrying the big pillow on which the crown is set right. that is brought up to Reverend Sun Young Moon to proclaim him the Savior. Yeah. I wow. knew that he was, he was a self-proclaimed you know, second coming of Jesus Christ, which is, again, it's one of the uh, arguments that you know, people, and basically he supports Republicans. Republicans say, I mean, it's bad for Democrats to take money from Soros because he's a self-admitted atheist. But yet the Republicans are taking money from, uh, you know, this, this other crackpot who's the second coming of Christ. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I have a question for the Christians out there. What do you think is worse, a guy who just doesn't happen to believe in your God or a lunatic who claims that he is your God? Yeah. <laughs> according to the, uh, the first and presumably uh, commandment. Presumably, he isn't. <laughs> yeah. And according to the first commandment, but obviously a person who doesn't believe in God is, should be the, the bitter of the two. Because he's not putting any other God before these Christians' gods. Yeah. But again, that's another thing Christians seem to uh, neglect is they seem to want to pass over the first commandment. They, they might want to. They might want to. You know, take a moment. Yeah, sure, I understand that in their books, George Soros is a horrible person on account of he doesn't believe in their God. But they might want to look at a guy with at least as much money, <laughs> who is who is crowning himself their Lord yeah. and Savior. They really ought to look into that and decide which of those two guys is most in need of their ire. And exactly. isn't he one of the guys, I think there was a story a couple months back where when he proclaimed that he was, he's not the second coming of Jesus, but he is like a sec, he is like another Messiah. Okay. Another God. Messiah. Technicality. But <laughs> he had had this, oh yeah, yeah, he yeah. He claimed that he had the meeting with Jesus and God and Buddha and Zeus and Allah. Right. All those gods. All the other gods got together and they wrote letters (laughs) in support of him (laughs) and said, you know, I, the undersigned, Jesus H. Christ, you know, do so support some young moon. He's a freaking lunatic. So, yeah, he's nuts. (laughs) Yeah, I suppose they're at some place where I guess Bush Elder went with uh, Moon down to some place in South America, I believe, and was basically supporting Moon. Uh, and again, it's... Uh, yeah, in fact, the elder Bush is at a podium at this ceremony um, you know, reading some kind of statement saying, oh, Reverend Moon, aren't you so great? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just it's baffling. It's mind-boggling. Yeah. Anyway, uh, good show, and uh, keep up the work, guys. Talk to you later. Thank Bye. you for calling. And the article I read about that, it points out that um, there's stuff in the Constitution that specifically prohibits Congress from, like, crowning anybody (laughs) king, you know, giving out out noble royal titles, which is uh, effectively what they were doing in this little ceremony. But was that their official business, though? Or was that their weekend duty? (laughs) 
man. <laughs> if, if we're in a state where congressmen have to tread that middle line <laughs> to justify what they're doing, then um, uh, it's scary. that's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go on to John. What you got for us? Yeah, I just wanted. I'm gonna got a couple of small comments to make. Okay. I am a Christian, by the way. Okay. And uh, I was just wondering if you ever, if you acknowledge, and if you ever had the experience of the uh, the energy when people, you know, uh, are angry with you. That internal feeling, you feel it in your bones. And there's probably no way to measure that. That's, it is there. that's biochemistry. And yeah. They can't. That can be measured. You guys Testosterone. Do, yeah. Or how about the serotonin levels yeah. when when people do? Uh, yeah, they call them serotonin yeah. levels because they can actually measure the amount of serotonin. Yeah. yeah. So uh, was that part of the, uh, has that been put in the equation too? I'm, I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, people that are taking, taking advantage of, of uh, Christianity and, and misleading a lot of people and taking yeah. money for it, but I think there, there is the good source. There are the, the good people, that, uh, the true energy people out there that, that uh, are not doing that. True energy people? Well, yeah, people that, that? that are tapped into the... To, the true spirit, and uh, well, you just mentioned yeah. serotonin and, yeah. and and you know other blood chemistry issues. You're talking about something else now, right? Yeah. No, they said the, that you know that that the serotonin levels can be measured. You know, with people yeah. just giving prayer to another individual. Uh, uh, that's another one of those studies. Yeah. I think you ought to yeah. really before you come to us. I mean, we we do a show. We actually do research like every week to find out you know what the claims are. And what the uh, the results are of of investigations of those studies, right? Okay. You might benefit from checking, finding the specific study you're talking about, and finding out what other scientists say about that before you make the assumption that because there is a study that therefore it is true. Yeah, there have been lots of different studies that show prayer helps people recover from uh, medical injuries and medical accidents and illnesses and that type of thing, usually they're either so flawed, it's, it's really not worth anything, yeah. or they've been, you know, two weeks later, they've got 20 other studies, so in that, no, you're, you must have been smoking something when you wrote that one up. Um, yeah. those, that's usually the case on them. Um, so. Okay, just one more, one more comment. Do you guys, uh, have you ever heard of Emanuel Swedenborg, the scientist? Mm, not by name, no. Well, I would I would recommend if I can recommend one one book. He's written uh, two thirty five volume uh, uh, books, and uh, he was a scientist. <coughs> and uh, the last thirty years of his life was was dedicated to finding the spirit. And he's got a, a really good book out called uh, Spinners of the Spirit. And uh, but did he find it? <laughs> uh, well, that's that's interesting. I think that'd be something for you to reveal. But oh, I would say dude, that one... got to the chase. I'll read. I, you know, I might be interested in reading a book where the guy went out to try to prove that there's such a thing as a soul. Okay, well, and he, he did, did prove that there's such a thing as a soul. Did he or didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. Yes, he did. Really? So that's why the medical community accepts that there is a such such a thing as the soul now. Yeah, yeah the, the medical community no. does <laughs> recognize. A no, actually, no. And, and two hundred years before the Wright brothers, he actually, you know. Uh, you know, drew up a, or designed a plane, and uh, just recently they built it. They've flown it. And it's in the Smithsonian. Who did? Pardon me. This so this is, guy. So this guy is old, as in he's not just I'm in the sorry, last ten years. An, is, is this a aviator or a doctor we're talking about? He's a scientist. Yeah, but what kind? What's his field? He studied all the sciences from the medical field. It sounds like there there is a reason why scientists tend to specialize. It's because. Every single field is hard. Yeah. Well, I think that what you're, what you're saying is this guy is from a long time ago, as in before the right... He wasn't yeah, like five he years ago. Years the right they, so. yeah, they, yeah, even if that's true, <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Well, I would just say he's a scientist. He invented he an airplane scientific. earlier than the Wright brothers, therefore there is a soul? That's not the issue. No, I'm just saying he's a scientist. I think he's got a lot of valid... He's got a lot of valid, valid and, points. And, and he's and got lots of books, tons of books on it. And I would say, you don't know this, man. This is a source. And I would recommend. And, 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 I, I take your advice too. Okay. Recommending, okay. you know, these studies. Fair but I, I would say I give this to you as well. But I have to correct you. The medical community does not, in fact, uh, there is not a consensus in the medical community that there is such a thing as a soul. There just isn't. Okay, that's that's okay. the medical community. There are there are some uh, physicians that believe that there is. And there are some that don't believe that there is. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I asked is, if this guy had proved it, right, scientifically proved it, there would be much less disagreement than there, in fact, is. 
I would doubt that. <laughs> you would <laughs> doubt people, what? You think that you think that people? You think? Well, okay, now you you explain to me. Why do you think there would be as much disagreement as there is, even if it had been proved? Uh, that's just the human human nature. I don't know why they that, human that, nature. Yeah, human nature just you know will not accept. No, if, if science if science. People were very unwilling to accept that the sun is the center of our solar system. That's correct. Science has since proved that, and very few rational people dispute that anymore. Right. If a scientist came out and said that they have some form of proof that there's a soul, then it'll take a couple of years to catch on because that's got to go through peer reviews. Other scientists yeah. have got to look at it and you know pick it apart and find out you know is this truthful or not. Do but if they have proof of something. Whether you like it or not, it's proof. Can, can I ask so. you a question, Colin? Yeah. Do you think that we up here, that uh, it's our human nature that makes us not be Christian? Like, that I would there's the something in us that makes us refuse to be, to agree even though it's been proved? I think doubt is, is part of human nature, and I think you guys are, are definitely that examples of, of very heavy doubt. And that's that's why I would say that you know I, I think uh, a scientist uh, well known as, as, as Swedenborg, you know, taking his point of view and all his writings, all his studies, all of his qualifications to, to look at that and uh, and probably dispel a little bit of that doubt. But I think yeah. it is well, human yeah. nature to be doubtful. I, I'm not a scientist, mm -hmm. right? But I respect scientists, and I know just enough about it to um, to know to pay attention to things like. You know, is this thing that some people believe widely regarded as true by the scientists who actually know this stuff and are in a position to make a decision? Yeah. Which so you know, my my my, my non-belief of this is not because I've heard of Swedenborg's work mm -hmm. and rejected it because of my human nature. It's because there. It's because when you look at what to believe in science, right? You don't take some guy who made claims several hundred years ago, and those claims have not been accepted by the medical community in general, right? right. And and say, well, but but he made claims that I like, so I'm going to believe him and write every other scientist off as a skeptic who is rejecting it just because of their own, you know, human nature bias. I don't do that, but I would say. That well, you are doing it. No, you I'm just not, did I, that. I, accept that I, I like a. Uh, uh, <coughs> The author C. Clark is a great scientist, and I don't know what his beliefs are. I, I do. He's probably atheist. atheist. Yes, he is. But that, that's fine. I still, it, uh, I still admire and respect his beliefs uh -huh. and his studies. His field of studies yeah. went there. Emanuel Swedenborg, his studies went went further there. He 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 wanted to find out: is there a spirit? Is there is is does this exist in man? Well, how do you know that Swedenborg went farther? Pardon me. How, why why do you say Swedenborg went farther? Well, he's he's written. Uh, well, as like I said, two thirty-five volume books but, uh, on, but on that, research. That doesn't science. mean that his. That doesn't mean that what he actually discovered goes farther. It could be that what he actually discovered, no matter how many books he wrote, yeah. goes less far. It could be that Arthur C. Clarke found out more. Do right. you actually know? Well, yeah, I would say then. Then I just offer this to you. Just uh, All right. open, open your heart up and. and and, uh, our heart. What does our heart have to do with evaluating scientific evidence? Yeah. Well, there, there's there's the scientific evidence in that. I'm, I'm you know I'm offering this to you. That, guys. that should be opening up your mind, though. Yes, open up your mind. To, to yeah, our minds are open. Yeah, if if our yeah. minds are open. Again, just if there's not so open that you know any old yeah. nonsense can fall in. Yeah. Again, if there's scientific evidence out there of a soul or God or whatever, All right. I want to hear it. Well, yeah, we do. We don't actually know. We you haven't seen it. any. Okay. Thanks, dude. So, Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Sean. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, as you said, that was a long time ago that yeah. that study came out. That I, you know, I, 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 um, I don't want it. So, I hope we weren't too hard on that guy. But uh, the the thing about science, what science is all about, <laughs> is you know hard nosed, skeptical investigation. Right. Hard nosed. It means you, there are some rules about how you do science about how you gather evidence, about how you evaluate evidence, about what constitutes evidence and what doesn't. Hard nose means you stick to the darn rules, yeah. right? Skeptical means you go in without a pre-established bias of what you think you have to discover, and you don't let your own personal wishes tell you what 
you're supposed to discover. You just look at the darn evidence applying the rules, yeah. right? What was the third thing I said? Hard-nosed scientific... Oh, an investigation is, then you actually go to the trouble of investigating. Mm-hmm. You know, that... There's, there's emotional th- appeals, like open your heart. Just yeah, Even asking us that, even asking us to reevaluate this by going at it with our heart opened is exactly the same thing as saying go into it without being skeptical. Yeah. But skepticism is a good thing. Yeah. Right? As long as you then follow through and actually do the investigation and apply the rules of science, skepticism is a good thing. It keeps you up from, you know, going off into crazy directions like this study from um, yeah, about the from uh, Columbia University, right? Yeah. Where they got published and apparently, even though it's all nonsense, because somebody somewhere along the line opened their heart instead of uh, applying yeah. crit- rules of critical thinking. Yeah, they, a lot of times religious people have this view that scientists are this friendly network that only shared beliefs are the ones that will actually get in. And so when a scientist release, uh, releases something that agrees with everyone else, it's a backslapping session, and they all agree with that. As soon as somebody from the outside comes in and offers something like, here's evidence of creationism, then all the, because he's not a member of that group, they all get to bash him yeah, and their trajectory. It's not because he's not a member. It's, it's not like that. he's probably saying stuff that directly flies in the face of established yeah. facts. Yeah. Right? And whatever happens, it's because whatever. He's, yeah. he's going at, it's because he's presenting his beliefs without sticking to the rigorous rules of science. Yeah. And it's because he's not doing investigation, he's just making claims. Yeah. And it's that kind of stuff that'll get you laughed at by the scientific yeah. community, no matter what you're claiming. Yeah. Whenever you know, a, a guy says he can levitate teacups is going to be laughed at just as much as a guy who comes in with some religiously based claim yeah. if he can't prove that it's actually true. Yeah. Whenever scientists make a claim, other scientists jump on top of that and try and tear it apart. Yeah, and That's uh, part of what science is. And, of course, it is true. Since scientists are human beings, scientists do make mistakes. Of Sometimes course. things like uh, a, a famous example is the pla- uh, uh, plate tectonics theory of the movement of the Earth's crust, which when it was first suggested that continents had actually moved around over time, um, was rejected out of hand because of bias like that. Hmm. But that sort of bias doesn't last and anybody at that time who had looked at the evidence critically could have detected that it was just bias going on and not, uh, and not good science. So that can happen, but just because it can happen doesn't mean it happened in the case of a thing you want to believe that scientists have rejected. You know, it, that what matters is whether the scientists have looked at all the evidence and done science right. And in the case of evolution, they have. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go on to other callers, and we have got Jim. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, yes, I just want to know what an atheist was. Ah. <laughs> you want to? You sound like you have a good answer for this. Oh, you probably both have good <laughs> answers. Go ahead. Your... Um, I've been babbling. Atheists, uh, pure and simple, is lack of a belief in any gods. Yeah. Um, we oh, haven't okay. seen any kind of real evidence or anything out there to say, look, God is real because of this, 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 and this. Therefore, we choose not to believe it. Just like ghosts, elves, Bigfoot, uh, Loch Ness Monster, there's no real good scientific evidence out there for it. We reject God just like everything else like that. Okay. And I... Well, so, like... So, like, if there was proof that there was, like, a Jesus or a Buddha, you would, you would be, like a, like, a Christian, maybe, or something like that? If there was, ac- yes, if science came forward and said, look, you know, we found evidence that there okay. really is a God, yes. then, yeah, I, w- yes. I would be, I would have to believe that. Um, now, if there was actually a Jesus, that's a little more questionable because it is possible that there was somebody named Jesus walking around, uh, around that area of the world at the time teaching these certain things. That doesn't prove that he actually turned water into wine and and did miracles and brought people back from yeah. the dead. But, but so that's an proved, extra claim. But, but if, if they science, proved but, that But stuff. if it was proved that there was a magical Jesus, exactly. we'd, we'd believe it. Exactly. We, oh, okay. we'll, we'll believe anything anybody can actually prove. Exactly. Right? That, but have you been watching our show? Like that, you know, that last guy who said, open your hearts? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, we think that there's there are darn good times and places for being uh, emotionally open, but not when you're deciding what is the difference between fact and fantasy. And so, um, you know, uh, we we're not willing to accept you know arguments like, well, you know. Uh, Jesus did all this stuff for you, and because you know we're making this emotional appeal to you, you need to believe him. Because if you don't believe in him, you're being mean to this guy that did all this stuff for you. Our first response is, "Wait, you haven't proved that there even was a guy that did all that stuff for us." Oh, right. Well, but, so y'all don't like believe in the Bible or anything like that? Uh, I've like, seen a Bible, <laughs> but you don't believe that God like. Made it or no. It's it's well, a book don't. just like any other book that's out there. There's a lot oh, of fiction okay. books on the shelves that yep, but, say a lot of things. Yeah, and there's all kinds of different religions too, right? I mean, to yeah. us, they look all equally made up. Right. Oh, okay. So, um, oh yes, I I got two more questions. Okay. Sorry. Um, Are you doing a report on us? Huh? Are you doing a report on us? Uh no, I just wanted to know if. That's, okay. That's good. That's good. We're impressed. Right. Go ahead. Um, and, um, oh, gosh. Do y'all have, like, churches for no. atheist people? Well, actually, that's a, a slightly difficult question, right? That, um, the, the easy answer is no. Atheism isn't a religion because we don't have ceremonies, we don't have a god, we don't have, you know, stuff we do that's like a religion, right? But there's a group up in Dallas called the North Texas Church of Free Thought that is, for all intents and purposes, an atheist church because they decided that they wanted to do their atheism in, you know, in a regular weekly group where they have songs and they have a speaker and they, 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 they go to those meetings that are kind of like church meetings and they're willing to call that a religion, right? But for a lot of atheists, it's not. It's just, you know, if you don't believe that there's any gods, then you're an atheist. Okay, so, um, uh, I got one more question. Do, um, like, do y'all, do y'all believe, like, in gay people, like... <laughs> we've seen those, too. No, we've seen them, too. Is that huh? it? We have seen there... gay people. Yes, we know that they exist. What about uh... <laughs> Is that all this was about? <laughs> Go to hell. Wow. <laughs> okay, kid. <laughs> Had some good questions for a little while there. Um, all yeah, right. there is, we don't believe in any of those either. Hells. Ah, yes. yes. So we don't plan on going anywhere like that. Um, okay. So sad. You know, I hear, get this little <laughs> inkling that maybe humanity, you know, there's hope for it. Getting better. Thinking about <laughs> stuff, asking reasonable questions. Nope. No, sorry. Nah. All right. Uh, uh, that kid. Let's go on to... Amanda, how you doing? Hi, Ashley. Hi, Hello. Jeff. Hi, Amanda. I'd like to counter one of the things that was said earlier, that atheists don't believe in other things. I've been with the ACA a long time, and I've never met so many believers in ghosts, pet psychics, UFOs. It's really? Among the ACA members? for being an atheist is you don't happen to believe in a god. No, that's true. That's true. Yes. So the so idea that Ashley, we're Ashley stuffy earlier said we don't believe in to believe and cold-hearted yeah. caca. What, what, I've what, never what, met so many people willing to go out of their way to try to believe things. Well, to research and, and study and look into things. I, I've seen a lot of ACA members that look into, you know, paranormal things just in general. Yeah. Um, to find out, you know, are they true or not, and they read articles and studies and blah, blah, blah. Um, I haven't met too many people who actually believe in those things and say that UFOs are real and but, that really but she's is right. Watch. But she is exactly right. Atheism is only about not believing God. in, in gods. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with not believing in, in other stuff. Exactly. That's true. So I'd like to offer some advice to atheists and theists alike. When you're deciding what to believe, and my tip for the year is to separate the science from the pseudoscience. Uh, the study you cited earlier sounds like pseudoscience and the two things that make it pseudosciency the first one is the lack of a causal link when you make an assertion in science that a causes b 
you're, you're not just bound to prove that A really does cause B. You also have to say how. So if you say there's a soul or that prayer leads to insemination, you also have to say, how does it do that? Yeah. No matter how subtle the supernatural effect is, somewhere along the way it pokes its nose into reality. Well, it's God. If it see. doesn't poke its way into reality <laughs> in a reliable way, yeah. it's a meaningless assertion. You might as well postulate that waves from Sirius are causing pregnancy. If yeah. you can't isolate how and why that happens, you don't have science. Right. Yeah. The second thing that's missing is disproof of your rivals. There are lots of studies out there that say, no, prayer has no effect. And a scientific study that's peer-reviewed is obligated by the philosophy of science to say, okay, this other study over here that's gained some merit, here's how they probably got it wrong. This right. other study here, yeah. here's where they went wrong. Yes, and, and, and in this article, you know, all the, the talk about flaws in the methodology, that is that. That is scientists coming back, looking at that study and saying, but wait, you claim that this proves that praying for women getting in vitro fertilization improves their chances of conception, but there's all the, there are all these flaws in the way that you're compiling and uh, analyzing your numbers. Right. Yeah. So when somebody says something like, astrology is real, and here's the statistics that you get more doctors born under the sign of Aries, for example. <laughs> Why? You've got to say, how is it happening? Is it gravity? Is it booba waves? And yeah. if it is booba waves, You've got to explain not only how to detect booba waves and how you prove there are booba waves, you've got to explain by the thousands of other physicists out there somehow overlooked it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. That's right. Science that's is actually it. hard. That's you know. all I wanted to say. Thanks uh, a lot. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Science is actually hard. So, you know, when somebody comes to me and says, this guy was, uh, you know, did he studied all the sciences. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Very few people are capable of handling more than two or three branches of science competently. Yeah. This is a, that, that's a reason why we have, uh, scientists generally specialize. Um, yeah, to have any more than a rudimentary understanding, you're going to have to specialize. And rudimentary <laughs> is not going to cut it for a lot of different things when you make claims. Huh. Okay. So, uh, let's go on to Derek. How you doing? How you doing? What you got for us? Um... This is kind of parallel to the um, caller before the last one about what exactly is the atheist okay. main priority and main goal in the Austin community. Okay. What is the goal of the uh, atheist community of Austin or the show? They, they're slightly different. Um, the atheist community in Austin. Ah. Okay. Um, mostly po promoting positive atheism and separation of church and state. We're mm -hmm. out there as an educational group to say... This is what atheists are. Here's mm -hmm. what atheists believe and don't believe, and here's why. And we're not a bunch of de bunch of double worshiping baby eaters. Mm -hmm. um, and also promote positive uh, separation of church and state to say mm -hmm. that you know, look, the Christians shouldn't be taking over the government mm -hmm. and doing all these different kind of wacky things to say mm -hmm. that you have to be a Christian to be a good American. Yeah. Um, the the key word that you just said was. Well, the key words, excuse me, was separation of church and state. Uh -huh. And then um, Jeff, uh, is that his name? That's uh, me, yeah. Uh, uh, um, they said there was a, a church, in atheist church in Dallas or something like that? Uh, yes, there are okay. atheists. It is true that there are some atheists who have organized themselves into uh, church-like, religion-like groups. Okay. Well, but, but, um, but just like, I mean, I've had many Christians tell me that, um, you know, uh, believing in God isn't a religion. Going to a particular denomination's, uh, you know, uh, house of worship every week and participating in all that, that's the religion, okay. right? And it well, would be like that for atheists, too. But it's a very, very tiny percentage of people who are atheists that mm -hmm. decide that it, they think it's right for them to meet in, a, you know, a, a regular place every week and do church-like things. Okay, so... Basically, what you guys are saying that it's two de two definitional meanings for the separation of church and state, and for the atheist church. Am I right or wrong? No, I don't know what you mean no. by that. 
I, well, I'm assuming you know, the that the atheist separation church, of church and state, and then sure. you say there's an atheist church, so, so that would that, that mean there's, the state. there's two definitional meanings. No, 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 no. The, no. The, 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 church, the North Texas Church of Free Thought is separate from the state. Yeah, and they should be. They should not be able to put up a monument that says, God, there is no God. Yeah, they shouldn't be able to do that. They shouldn't go to the Capitol building and say, you know, yeah. so. here's, here's a big monument saying there is no God. Okay. They shouldn't do that. So, um, in the dictionary, the word church means a building for um, public worship, especially for Christian worship. Okay. So, um, if the atheists don't believe in Christianity or higher power, then why would they even associate themselves with naming something with the word church in it? Because uh, a lot of, I mean, a lot of atheists used to be Christians or members of other religions. And they remember how it was nice to get together with other like-minded people once a week, uh, you know, to socialize and share ideas and so on. And they mm -hmm. they miss that structure, but it's the structure part that they're mimicking from religion, not the not so, the God belief part. So I think it would have would have been done nicely to say sinner instead of church if you don't believe in. The whole you thing. can take that argument up with them. Yeah. The atheist community of Austin. Yeah. Do you in agree, Austin, do you, we're not a church. Do you exactly. agree with that? What they're the, the way they named themselves. Do you guys agree with it? Uh, Agreeing with it's kind of tough because that's a separate group. If they want to do things oh, like okay. that, well, that's I'll, they're, they're free to. Well, I don't totally see any problem with it. I thought you guys were agreeing with with them and following their traditions and stuff. In, their, oh, no, 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 in no. their general philosophies of being free thinking, atheist, uh, that type of thing, we agree with them. Yeah, we agree. In the way that they actually structure their group and go to, you know, a church every week and hear a lecture, mm -hmm. that I'm not so keen on. Okay. But if that works for them, great. Okay. So yeah, our uh, problems are the problems that we have with religion are mm -hmm. not the, they're not about the fact that th it, it involves people meeting once a week to socialize and and get together. I mean, we don't have any problem with that. There's all kinds of groups that do that. Yeah. Right. Our, the things that we have problems with about religion are the whole, you know, belief and stuff that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Part. So if I if I asked you a question and told you what skin color do you think I am, what would you say? Uh, I would guess from your voice that you're that you're African American. Okay, but I don't actually know. Okay. Not that it well, really matters. Yeah, you're right. I am African American. Okay. So that's um, I'm um, what I'm trying to say is then, um, in order to experience something, you have to have details, and you have to have proof that it is it is what it actually is. You understand what I'm saying? So sure. the way the Christians organize and the way the Islamic, Buddhists, and all those different they have some kind of proof that their God is real. Do they? Well, I, they have to in order for them to be worshiping and believing. Just we like don't, you said, we don't, we don't, don't think they need to have that proof at all. <laughs> we think it's obvious that they are worshiping and believing even though they don't have the proof. Yeah, but just like you said, I was African American and you didn't see me. Yeah. That's the same thing as hope. And, and even though you didn't see That's me the by the clues hope. that I... But... I'm, but I, I don't, even hope, though, even I don't though, have a hope that you were African American. <laughs> I don't actually care. Yeah. Okay. What I'm saying is, um, even though you didn't see me by the clues and the keys that I gave off, yeah, it proved that I was African American. Right? No, actually, if you recall, I said you sound from your from your voice, you sound like you're African American, mm -hmm. but I don't actually know. Okay. Right. And I still don't actually know. Now I'm taking your word for it. Yeah. But that's just you know polite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, one more question. Um, okay. Around the same thing, what I just stated about that whole African American deal, that's the same way with Christianity. We wouldn't be doing the things that we were doing unless we had a personal relationship and experience to let us know that really? what we're what we're seeking after but, and what we're okay. worshiping so you, you has, mentioned actually has an existence. Yeah. So you mentioned Buddhists and Muslims, and you mm -hmm. know, let me throw in. The uh, the handful of people in Rome who still worship the ancient Roman gods, mm. you know, or you the people like, in uh, or the people in Sweden that actually still worship the Norse gods, because mm. there still are some of those people. Yeah, like so the all those all people, them, all those you know. people have had their had a personal experience to prove that their gods really exist. 
But for how long did they stick with it? But that, no, 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 no. You, <laughs> hey, you know, you, know. you are the one who said that they must have that evidence mm -hmm. in order to be worshipping. Well, they're worshipping. Does that mean that they have proof that those gods exist? Um, yeah. And then, I mean, and then I want to know how many. Because if you've agreed that these pantheistic religions, right, their worshippers have proof that their whole groups of gods, you know, Zeus, Thor, Odin, uh, you know, all those guys all exist, then what does that say about the Christians who say well, there's only one? Well, then there's I'm a problem, is, isn't there? What I stated it in, in a natural, not a supernatural, but in the fleshly type, they... they they're worshiping only because of hearsay, and they haven't had a personal. How do you know? How do you experience? know they haven't? How, do, how can you speak for all what, the people you just in the said, world? You said Buddhists and Muslims and Christians have had the personal experience. How do you know that those other people didn't? Because they they haven't had a personal. Relationship how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? There's only one. How do you know? I'm sure. I'm religion. sure. If we call them up, we could find one that claimed that he had. How would you know? Well. I mean, I can only speak for myself and express my beliefs. I, I, exactly. I, I agree. Exactly. So you probably ought to, you ought to, probably ought to not, you know, start generalizing well, other I, people, I, I, yeah. telling threw, other people threw, what they believe they have had for experiences. See, I, I threw it out there not to actually give away that I was Christian, even though you might have picked up on it. Kind of did. Well, I mean, but that, that, that's beside the point, though. I mean, that, that the, doesn't really matter. The whole point here is, you know, there are religions out there where there are people happily worshipping away at gods which you, because of your, what you consider your personal experiences, mm -hmm. right, you have to reject the idea that those other gods actually exist. They're idols. Okay, so you reject those other gods. Yes, they're idols. But, but that destroys your argument that Anybody that has a church and meets all the time must therefore have proof that it's true. It means if there are people that are worshiping Zeus, even though they can't prove he's true, mm -hmm. there just as easily can be all kinds of people worshiping the Christian God without being able to prove that he's true. How would, how would you... In fact, in fact, I would argue that no religion ever has proved that their God is true. Okay, what was the question he was going to ask? How would you react or, I guess, explain yourself if, again, a believer in Zeus or Buddha or whatever uh, came to you and said, I have had a personal experience. I know that Zeus exists, and your God is just an idol. You don't have any proof. He's not real. You're just, you know, this Jesus character, just an idol. Mm -hmm. Well, first off, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't get in, I wouldn't get into any disputes about it. I would... So you plainly would state, agree? I would sense. plainly state my belief and my experiences and share what I have, and and if they don't accept it, then that's on them. All I, I did was share my, my beliefs and my testimony, that, and that's hey, perfectly you know, okay. that's on yeah, them. That's, good. You know? we're, we're, that's perfectly okay, and we're all in favor of that. Yeah. Um, please continue to believe whatever it is you want to believe and, uh, and, and say whatever you want to say about it. Those are, those are basic rights in this country that um, uh, we're all in favor of, um, but we're a little concerned that you know, with the, that, uh, the way things are going in this country, folks mm -hmm. like us might start losing that right. Yeah. So um, one more thing, and then I'll let you guys go. Right. So back to the forefathers when they founded the country on the Bible. and, and, and <laughs> that, that, That's a big assumption and that you just founded, made there. When they founded thing, when they, God, you know, was in, you know, around everything that they did. As well, As far well, as making decisions for the, well, for the country. No, no, I we, mean, so, we don't know or accept that. Uh, a lot of them were not Christians, and regardless of whether they were or weren't, should this be a Christian nation is a completely separate matter. Uh, they did not find, found this country on Christian principles or the Bible. Um, that is, as far as we can tell, pretty much a fact. Um, now, they brought over some Christian ideas, like you shouldn't kill. That's a pretty good idea. That's not a Christian idea. But that's... Actually. Exactly. Well, so Christians have this kill, idea. Why is, is, why is our country that took the Ten Commandments out of the state buildings and everything legalizing abortion if we shouldn't kill? I mean, in order to have an abortion, there has to be something inside of the woman to abort the baby. I mean, huh? you can't have an abortion if you're not pregnant. 
Uh, wow. You know, can we, the can, same country can, that... Can, can, can we ask you to call back on the, the abortion issue some other time? Because <laughs> if we go down that road... And that's, well, a whole, that's a whole. That's a whole other conversation. It's, it's, uh, it's I think, parallel but, to But we'll killing, certainly right? agree with you. We will certainly agree with you that um, that there is not one uh, overriding point of view that dictates all of the laws we have in this country. Mm -hmm. Right? We got laws that that either actually disagree or seem to disagree to some people, mm -hmm. and I think that's just entirely normal. That's exactly what you'd expect from a big country full of a whole bunch of different kinds of people who think different things. That, that is what it's going to be to live in a democracy. But me and Ashley, we were on the same page when he said that, don't kill. And then, well, I don't, abortion is did, killing. It's just legalized. Well, well so is God, war. We're going to insist that we get on this road. Do you want to go down this road? You have the power. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just interesting to me. To Getting on to general abortion <laughs> is is a is a bad road to get on. If you want to talk about you know death and saying killing is bad, mm -hmm. as a general rule, I'd agree with that. But to say that then we should you know there should never be any war, never be any death penalty, never have any abortions, never have any um, assisted suicide or anything like that. That's going a little bit far to say you know any th any time that life expires is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. It depends on the... It's a situational thing. In most situations where some life is extinguished involuntarily, that's mm -hmm. usually not good. Right. But there's a but whole... There's se a whole, bunch there's a whole separate question about when life begins, which, frankly, in my opinion, is going to come down to a matter of opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't think we'll ever have a complete agreement about that, nor do yeah. I think it's a bad thing that we don't have a complete agreement about that. Usually when you get too many people all agreeing with one thing at the same time, um, you've got a lot of people not thinking. And I, I, I'm against that. Yeah. Yeah. They've all accepted we should not move on. anymore. So. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a good day. Thanks okay, for thanks all for calling. All right. Uh, let's go on to Christian. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, what you got for us? Okay, well, when I first called, I've been waiting for like, I guess, a few minutes now, but when I first okay, called, sorry. two things I wanted to ask, and then there was like two more points after listening to that guy, so got okay. where I start. <laughs> uh, I haven't been able, the first question I had was, where have you guys been? I've only seen y'all two times now, the first time I called and asked a question, and I, I really like your show, and I just, okay. I think that right now, my belief, since I won't speak for anybody else, I'll just speak for myself, and I'll let you guys kind of throw your input on what you think. Um, my belief is that the media tends to manipulate uh, our culture. And I think through the messages, getting messages that our government, and that basically owns the media, wants us to believe. I think religion is a big part of that. I think that we're raised as a culture through fear, through fear of certain outcomes and consequences that will happen if you don't do what your mom or your dad wants you to do. And I think religion, for me, I was raised Catholic, and a big thing was fear. If you don't believe in God, you're going to go to hell. If you don't believe in, you know, Mary, Mother of Jesus, and all this and that, you're going to burn in hell, and you're going to suffer, and, you know, your family's going to burn in hell, whatever. And I think that that's, that's a really big issue. I think that shows like what you guys have break through that manipulation. I think through freedom of speech, freedom to be able to put on your own shows, express your own views, and, you know, correct the criticism, wherever it may come from, I think that this is a very crucial thing. And if you guys aren't on more, that the media is going to have a lot more opportunity to, you know, basically yeah. just strike fear in, in our society. Yeah. I, Tell them when the show's on. Uh, okay, yeah, first off, uh, <laughs> we're live every Sunday, Channel 10, 4.30 to 6. We have reruns every Tuesday, same cool. time, same channel. There's also an Internet audio show that I host, yeah. which is every other Saturday... Uh, set your web browser to www.atheistnetwork.com, um, okay. and there's a link to click on to listen live. Also, if you go to the Atheist Community of Austin website, which is www.atheist-community.org, uh, there are uh, there's a, uh, like the last five or seven episodes there that you can listen to on demand. Uh, the audio show, if I didn't say, is every other Saturday from 2 to 3.30. Okay. Yeah. Um, but as far as uh, going back to a little more of what you're saying about the media manipulating or, uh, I guess, giving us our beliefs in a sense. Yes. Um, I don't know exactly how much of that I believe in the... In, well, 
<laughs> bad, bad way to say it. Um, but I, th I think the media generally puts out what people want to listen to and want to watch. Um, the stations that are doing well are typically the ones that have a lot of people watching, which means they're putting on stuff that people want to see. If stations are putting out um, the truth, which nobody wants to hear and everybody hates, nobody watches it, they typically don't last all that long, or they don't do very well. Now, is that a good thing? that people are only watching what reaffirms their current beliefs? I don't think so. But that's why I like to have the freedom of expression and freedom of speech in this country, that we can have a show like this, whether people like it or not, we can have this show. Now, they have the choice not to watch it. They can change a channel if they want. But to just have the ideas out there, I think, is a good thing. So well, think about it this way. With, what is it, I guess, five or six big businessmen that own all the major... Uh, um, television companies, NBC, CBS, ABC, and so forth. Uh, I believe when I when I use the word manipulation, that's a pretty strong word, and I know yeah. that it comes off pretty that's that's you know pretty confident, maybe a little overboard. But what I mean by that is that uh, shows I think tend to have messages a lot of the time that I think uh, companies look at ratings and see, well, this is this is a good message. This is what like a show that had anything to do with anything with uh, to do with atheism whatsoever. I think would just be unacceptable. You would never see that on a prime time slot. I think that being in mainstream media, I think would just be in, in fathomable. I mean, I think that them doing uh, what was the spinoff of the craft, the show um, Charmed. I think that was probably about as far as a, any. Any, any. Um, Charmed had atheists. Well, no, Charmed had had you know kind of had like the witchcraft angle, yeah. and that was becoming slightly acceptable, oh, and that was really yeah. one of the very rare. Yeah, shows I never that, watched that show. I was a Buffy guy. Well, I, t I could tell you this much: when I watched Charmed, I was just kind of like, well, I mean, it's dolled up. You know, it's 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 really, it's it's dolled up, and it's a lot of dialogue maybe that doesn't have to do with the, with the tradition. But that's a whole other subject on itself. The real main question I have for you guys is. My entire life, of course, I've always believed that there was sometimes I could be in a place that maybe something was just there, you know, and it's referred to ghosts, spirits, and, and so forth. And I guess maybe that belief has kind of been somewhat just, you know, basically embedded into my brain as a result of, you know, Catholic religion, basically saying that spirits and how there are ghosts. And I noticed earlier you guys commented that you don't believe in ghosts and that, you do not really find you haven't found any scientific proof or to support those those that theory. Yeah. And I was just wondering, just try and give some information on why you believe that. I, I, not that I disagree with you. I just don't know anything about it. Yeah. Take this one. Sure. Um, yeah. Just to clarify, uh, atheism doesn't have anything anything directly to say about ghosts, right? Okay. Atheists are just guys that don't believe in gods. Gotcha. But I can imagine somebody who has a worldview that where they don't believe there's gods, but they do believe there's ghosts. Okay. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me or to most atheists I've ever spoken to, right? Yeah. But the atheist word doesn't say anything about that. Um, boy, I guess that's all I had to say in response on to a, that. On a, person, on a more, slightly more personal note, though, yeah. uh, most atheists typically don't believe in ghosts and stuff like that for the same reasons that they don't believe in God. Yeah. There is no really good scientific evidence. They have you know, studies out there and they have books out there that show that ghosts are real and Sasquatch is real and stuff like that. But they have just as much, well, they have very little evidence actually backing them up. Yeah. Can I, can I mention... personal accounts and stuff like I that. Can I mention an excellent television show? Okay. I can't... Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to mention Penn and Teller, the famous ah, uh, yeah. comedy uh, magician duo, yeah. have an excellent series called uh, Bullshit. <laughs> I think this is on Showtime, that, isn't it? I think it's on Showtime. That's as much information as I've got for you. Yeah. Um, uh, and there's other things. Um, there's other shows cropping up these days that are taking a more skeptical view of um, of a lot of cl things. claims that are popularly believed. And uh, I just mention these as resources that are out there for folks that uh, might like to get some more background on arguments against those kinds of beliefs. Yeah. Also a website, uh, skeptic.com. Okay. Um, yeah, don't we have some text we can one. put up of good websites yeah, I think for we, skept uh, skeptical well, I guess, I feel like I that resources? Yeah. But Me that's, personally, that's I don't really, I, I've found it very hard to put my faith in a god or a higher power. It's it's really difficult. I've never labeled, or called, not labeled, but called myself an atheist. I've never referred to myself as that because I've never researched much about uh, atheist beliefs. 
Last the first time I well, saw the show, it, I actually we can make it easy yeah. for you. I think. What's that? I think we can make it easy for you. Okay. Do you believe that there's a God? No. Then you're an atheist. <laughs> Well, it's that, it's that exactly it's that, that simple. simple. I've yeah. just been kind of I've been careful to to refer to myself as one belief or another for for the you know the simple fact that I I wouldn't like to call myself or refer to myself as something or take a title of something. Sure. Well, you don't have to call yourself that, but you know we'll call you one. Well, yeah, of course, <laughs> and I have no problem with that. I mean, it's not to me, it's not an offensive term, atheist. I I mean, when I just growing up, of course, I was always told atheists were like devil worshippers, and yeah, exactly. as I got you know as I moved well, that, out, that's exactly got what you'd expect those people to say. Yeah, of course. I mean, and they. The same thing that they would say about paganism or anything else. It was yeah, just sure. lopped right in there. Yeah. And, you That's know, why finding the out show. the difference. But um, I think the only reason why I've ever felt like maybe ghosts did exist was just certain experiences I've had that I never have felt fear in in the specific home that I've gone to in Houston, Texas. I've just never felt that kind of fear just from standing in a place like I felt when I was in that house that day. And that's the only reason why I, I wonder if maybe they are real. I still ask that question, and I, you know, I call shows like this uh, to get your, your opinion on it. It's like a, you know, just a sponge that soaks up. You yeah. know, Our, we, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say a few more words on the whole ghost subject, and that's probably all that we can do for you. Um, science, medical science accounts for life already. It's, there's no point at which the biology that we understand isn't enough to account for the fact that we have creatures that like walk around and move around and stuff. Right? So from that angle, there's no need to postulate ghosts in the first place. Um, and that's the same kind of logic that we that you know that we apply to things like gods, right? Yeah. And if there's no if science accounts for it then why make up something more? There are issues remaining uh, in explaining consciousness, right? Explaining how it is that a mass of cells like a brain can produce the minds that we experience ourselves having, right? And that, but that's an interesting area that's being researched. And there's nothing in that that looks like it's leading toward some, you know, some necessary assumption that there's some supernatural extra thing that goes and lives in the brain to make it be able to think. It looks like eventually the biology is going to get us there. It's just a question of working out the details. And as far as personal experiences that you and other people have had, we lump those into the same category that people have had personal experiences with God and Jesus and yeah. you know, God saved me. Yeah. It, it's yeah, it's you obvious know, you that can human have, beings can, can you know have, have those sensations feelings. and be wrong. Yeah. And, and you know, my, my first guess at an explanation for those kinds of sensations is, congratulations, you inherited genes that have been passed down from many, many, many millions of years of ancestors, many of which lived as frightened little savages out in the you know, out in the deserts, yeah. who could be leaped upon by a lion at any moment. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I know, thought I had the same it, kind sometimes of... Sometimes those instincts just kick in when they don't make a lot of sense. Well, one, one thing that I've always learned, even just, you know, going through school, is that human beings, we're, we're probably one of the most complicated creatures to really completely understand. Um, I, there's, there's an artist, Alex Gray, that if you go to his website, he's actually got an interesting take on certain things that people tend to just lop in with religion and just accept as valid without even questioning. And I, I, w listening to your guys' response to my question about the ghost, it brought a good point to my mind that this is a lot like religion. It, it, it's encompassing because just a simple growing up and saying ghosts are real and instilling that fear in a child, that I'm 23 years old. This has lingered on for years, as you can tell, just by me calling and making the effort to ask you this question. So that, and that's the same result that you get with, with being brought up in a religious family. Exactly. And that that lasts for years, and you're afraid to question because you just accept it as val a valid and your brain at that point, to me, it just it almost seems to cease functioning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because you're, yeah. not, you're not really thinking outside the box, and people aren't stepping outside yeah. to think about and start really questioning what are the things that we're believing in. Which is that important. Because really don't seem to have much validity or much background yeah. behind them. And so everybody's just kind of standing here going, well, I believe it. Yeah. And you that's. Know, tag that's me up with my little number here and just, you know, I believe it. Lock yeah. me in the group. And it's important in this country, Christianity is the dominant religion. And that's, yeah, and that's and it so comes to it's, the media. It's promoted and it's never really questioned because so many people believe it. It's just assumed that it's right. And another thing, another thing that I wanted to bring out and that maybe you guys could comment on, maybe if I'm right or wrong about this, but the past caller, he had said about the Bible and how the forefathers 
the founding forefathers had established this country on. Yeah, well, that's actually a, a, a that's actually you know a, a, a misstatement because there were way more than four of them. Well, you know what? I, th I, <laughs> think, I think it's some good dialogue for a good uh, Hollywood movie, but other than that, it's, it doesn't have much truth. The point that I wanted to make on that, though, is that uh, one of the good points of my brother when I asked him about the Bible and he wanted to debate with it is that the Hebrew and the, the, the language that it was originally written in passed over through generation and generations. There was many words that when they tried to actually transcribe it into English that there was no meaning to. Yeah. That there was no asso directed associate like... It's, you know, take this word, and, and if you, you know, uh, describe it and make it an English yeah. word, that's, it has a direct meaning with it, or I'm sure there's a word that I'm supposed to use, but translation. Yeah. There's direct translations that are missing, because there's no word that they could associate with it. It's an archaic language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so and people... Stop and did it. And so these <laughs> days, people are looking at Bibles as like they're like the golden ticket, and in reality, I mean, it's like any old folklore tales. What happens to a tale when you tell it, you know, ten times to ten different people? Yeah, when wow. it gets to the ten person, it's changed. It's modified. Because it's, it's just, we're human beings, and we cannot directly, word for word, verbatim, always, you know, re rely the same thing that was said to us. There's a couple trains of thought on that. I was of, of the opinion for a long time, and still am to the for the most part, that a lot of the stories of the Bible were told um, verbally, generation to generation, yes. like that. And so, at one time, there could have been someone like Jesus who had a basket, and there was a fish and a loaf of bread in it. And then he gave those out, and then he pulled off the tarp that was on top of it, and hey, it's filled up, there's a lot more underneath it. All of a sudden, after 300,000 tellings of that and 2,000 years, magically he produced all this stuff. And so it's just being told the story again and again and again and again that all of a sudden it's magical. Um, that was kind of how I assumed a lot of the stories of the Bible came to be, is just through telling them again and again, they get more hyped up and more unrealistic things enter into them, and all of a sudden you have these miracle ha miracles happening. Yep. The other train of thought is that they maliciously put them in because, you know, priests have to get converts they have to get people coming into the pews. And the way you do that is you make stuff up. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything real, you make it up. Damn and right. So, it's which of those is true? I'm the, not too sure. Probably a little bit of both. The good part of religion is entertainment. I, yeah. I always did like the, the good old movies that they made from the Bible. They always were good Hollywood movies. But as far as... Plus horror movies. Yeah, oh, you boy. know, basing your life off of it. What I'm would the horror sure. movie industry do if it wasn't for Christianity? But I tell you, I appreciate you guys letting me rant. I know you got a lot of callers to get to, and so I'll, I'll let you move on with the day. I'll be looking forward to next Sunday's show, man. You guys are doing a damn good thing out there. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Anytime. Bye. All right, uh, got a few minutes left. Uh, go ahead and take one or two more callers. We have got... Uh, Robin, how you doing? Hey, um, how are y'all tonight? Yeah, doing pretty good. Um, there's a man named Derek that uh, called, and he was talking about... Chris are you there? We lost her. Yeah. Lost her. Oh, hello? Are you there? Yeah. Okay, Did you blanked out on something. Passion of the Christ. I'm sorry? Did you see Passion of the Christ? Is this that okay, kid again? Okay, apparently not talking we to Robin to, anymore. We uh, need to hang up on this kid. It's the same thing. Okay, again. yeah. Um, did we see Passion of the Christ? Yes, thought it was... Uh, a very sad movie for a poor guy there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really That's, sucked to be him. Didn't yeah, you know, the, it, 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 I, I don't understand... You want to ask Robin to call back, yeah. he said? Yeah. Um, I don't understand what the... what the point of that movie is supposed to be. It's like, okay, <laughs> here's a guy who gets horribly, horribly, horribly tortured. Okay, and... <laughs> I and mean, it seems like the unstated assumption is because he got horribly tortured for you, you yeah. owe him something. Yeah. Now, just speaking on the legal side of that, there's <laughs> laws in our country that say if, you if some company sends you a product in the mail that you didn't ask for and you keep it, they can't just bill you for it, yeah. right? And that's called... Uh, Oh, I forget what that's called, but it's illegal. Yeah. You can't make somebody have a debt. You can't make somebody indebted to you by doing something for them without their permission. So the entire concept that, um, you know, that if a guy got horribly tortured for my, for my sake, that therefore I owe him, doesn't, it does not follow, at least from the perspective of our, of our own uh, nation's laws. 
Then there's the whole question of, well, did he in fact do anything for me? The movie's based on the assumption that we got these souls, that the souls are bound for eternal damnation if we don't uh, agree to uh, give Jesus credit for protecting them. But it's not established that we actually have the souls, or that they are in any danger, or that, you know, or that they would have deserved to go to a hell in the first place, even if they do exist. So, I don't get it. I just don't get it. <laughs> Yep, a lot of backslapping going on. Um, well, anyway, let's go on to, uh, let's see, Ray, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty well. What you got for us? Well, uh, I, I read a paper a while back, and I, I can hardly remember, but I wonder if you guys had any information on it. It's called the God Gene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've heard of the God part of the brain. I don't, exactly. Maybe, You're did, able they, to did they identify the gene that causes that? I don't know if they know what they have or not, but I was right. in a paper. Like, it was, it, I'm trying to remember it, but it yeah. where people, when they're born with that, switched on. Uh -huh. They're able to do miraculous things, supposedly, with their mind and stuff. Oh, no. Oh, that no, no, I no. haven't heard You of. have heard wrong. Oh, was it? Okay. Yes. Could, All that, there what is... information do you guys have on it? Because okay. I'm sure y'all are versed on it. I'm not. Here's the information. Um, there is a part of the brain which has been identified as the place where, if you stimulate it electrically the person that is being having that part of their brain stimulated gets the sensation of like there being supernatural higher entities around okay that's it there's no actual abilities involved it's just giving them the sense of experiencing that uh kind of like temporal lobe psychosis could be <laughs> okay. That's I can't a, make. I cannot that, connect those dots for you. I'm sorry. Well, that's what they're trying to say. Like when people have like alien experiences, they're trying to say, "Oh, it's just you know, what you just said." Okay. Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Just full of psychosis. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Wow. We apparently helped him. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember that they had this. Uh, it wasn't actually a study. It was um, something where they were studying a woman who had an epilepsy. Uh huh. And. That's basically where your brain just goes completely wacko. It just starts having these random impulses everywhere. Uh, we have Robin again on that um, one. We do? Yep. Okay, well, let's go ahead and try it out. Robin, you there? Hey, y'all. I'm Hi. back. Okay. <laughs> Not too sure what happened there, but what you got? Oh, it's all good. It's fine. Um, I remember Derek calling, and he was talking about Christianity versus uh, the Quran and the Torah and things uh -huh. of that nature. Yeah. Um, and he was just kind of you know, rambling on about it. But... Um, my view on it is, I'm a Christian, I'll just lay that out right now, but um, uh, my view on it is, is that the Bible was written over from a 1600-year period to about a 2000-year period. Um, that's how it was written. Um, it was written by about 40 authors plus, and in that year, in that time span, it was written over about a three-continent um, radius right there. Um, my viewpoint on it is, is that it would be kind of impossible for 40 authors over that many periods who would obviously die within, have written it, and then die, and then they would go on and there'd be more authors that would write it. To get all together, you know, during that time, transportation was very hard, <laughs> um, to get together and just write all the same thing. Um, and that kind of, and it makes sense to me that um, something supernatural did impose it because of the fact that there's so many authors in so many time periods. Um, and the Quran and the Torah, um, they weren't, it wasn't such a long time period. Um, the Quran and the Torah were more, it was more of a few authors and they weren't, it wasn't over a thousand year period. Okay. So, so you're saying generally the Bible has a lot of internal consistency to it, and yes. how could that have happened, essentially? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, it was, because it was written over yeah. such a long period yeah. of time, and that's in so well, many different continents. The so problem with that is, one, there isn't all that much consistency. You can take pretty much any position you care to mention mm -hmm. and find biblical passages that will back you up on it. Yeah, and um, I would take exception to the idea that it was written on so many different continents. I mean, uh, to, to that being significant, because we're talking Europe, Asia, and I guess bits of Africa, right? Yeah, the, the I mean, Northern these are all Africa. connected by land. A very mm -hmm. small, a very small piece of the Earth mm -hmm. uh, encompasses, you know, parts of all of those. So we're not talking about huge distances. It would be way more miraculous if Columbus had come to America and they had found lost books of the Bible here. Mm -hmm. Because that you know that would be quite surprising that people were writing about Jesus on a completely different continent who had mm -hmm. never heard of him. So I mean, the, uh, plus we don't agree that the Bible all makes a lot of sense. Okay. It, you know, as from our perspective, uh, we we see all kinds of inconsistencies. Yeah. Right. 
And on top of that, the Bible did have something else that you didn't mention, which was a board of editors. Mm -hmm. There were more books of the Bible than actually made it in. A bunch more stuff was written. And then the Council of Nicaea was a bunch of bishops, I think. I could be wrong about their actual status in the church. Got together and took all these books, and they handpicked the ones that they wanted to put in. But right? on that note, we have got to get going. We have got about 10 seconds left. Thanks for calling. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for, having a, for coming on and co-hosting. Thanks for having me. It's always fun. Yep. And we will see everybody next week.